For your next Finch robot program, you're going to be working with some more of the Finch methods. I've opened up the API documentation. And let's just take a look at the ones that you've already used. One of the, your homework assignments earlier was asking you to write down the methods and to categorize them. So the general methods are close and halt, and we've been using those in our program already. So you're familiar with those. Our Finch Dance program used the output method. So you used LED and you used wheels and maybe you might have even used buzzer. You probably didn't use buzzer with delay, but something that you can try. It's pretty similar to the buzzer. And these all just let the Finch give some kind of output. For our next program, we're going to use the sensors and just get familiar with how we can get output from how we can actually get information from the robot and use it in a program. So there are four sensor methods, temperature, light, obstacle, and acceleration. We're going to start with the first three. And then on your own, you can try the acceleration. And if you don't try it on your own, then we're going to do that in our next program. But we're going to start with the first three, see how easy it is to use our robot sensors, and then hopefully on your own, you're going to try acceleration. So I'm going to start a new program. I've got my comment block already is done at the top and I'm going to import my Finch from Finch and I'm going to do everything here in a main function. So let's start with the temperature and we can see from the example here that it gave the the value from the method is going to be assigned to a variable and they use my temperature. I'm just going to do a little shortcut and I'm going to use my temp and it's going to receive its value from this method. It's a return method. It's going to return whatever temperature the bench is reading in Celsius. So um, Finch is the object and before we do anything I better make an object. I'm going to call mine bird and I'm going to do my capital F because it's a class. So first I have to create my object and then I can get the sensors. I'm going to put in a little comment here. We're going to have sections would get everything really organized. So I'm going to get values from the sensors. So now we're ready for my temp and I've got my object which is bird and the method is temperature. And I still need to have my parentheses for any method just like I do for any function. Now let's just print out the value. So I'm going to display information using a basic print statement. And then, of course, I have to call the main function. So I've just used one sensor right now. And the Finch is hooked up. We don't really need to look at it because it's not going to be moving. It's not doing any output. It's just going to be relaying information. So there's going to be the output display. And let's run this. Now, it should ask me to save. You should always do that every time you make a change. Remember that you're going to save it into the Finch 120 window. So I've got the temperature. So right now at my house it is 20 degrees Celsius. And if I run it again, I'm probably going to get the same temperature. Now I'm going to take an ice cube and I'm going to put it on the Finch robot. And let's see if the temperature changes. So I put the ice cube right on the sensor, the temperature sensor. You can't really see it, but it's there. At near the, on the top of the finch and let's run it and let's see if the temperature changed. Alright, so it went from 20 to 17, now it's gone to 16. Even colder because I still have left the ice on. I'm going to take the ice off. Let's run it again. Right now it's still cold, but I assume that it will eventually recover. So we're going to do the next sensor and we'll come back and we'll just see how the temperature changes as we go. I'm going to keep the one that we have now and let's do the next one which is light. If we take a look at the example, it's got two values that it's going to return. It returns the left and the right sensor and the number is going to be between 0 and 1. Okay, so it's going to be a small decimal number. 
I'm going to call it. So I instead of just declaring one variable, I'm going to need two. So I'm going to have left and right. And I'm going to put this in my sensor section. So I'm going to have my left, or let's call it left light, and I need right light. Now I'm going to call my method. So I use my object dot, and then the method is called light. And of course, I have to have my parentheses. Well, let's print this information. So I've got um, left light, and be my variable, and I've also got bright light. So let's see what is going on. I, of course, I have to save it. And I've got my temperature reading, which is going up a little bit higher. And I've got light reading. So between 0 and 1, I don't have a lot of light going on. I could shine a flashlight on it, and we can try it again. So I'm going to shine the light right on the sensor, on one side of the sensor. And you can see that on the right side, it went quite a bit higher. I'm going to shine on the other side. Now you see that the left side went quite a bit higher. And I'm going to put it in a box so that there's no light. And you see we've got pretty much no light going on. And the temperatures come back up. So we've got two of our sensors. They're working great. Let's try the next one. The next one's going to detect an obstacle. It's going to ha It has two sides. So we have a left and a right. And it's going to return false for no obstacle or true. So they're going to be Boolean values. Let's come up here to our sensors. And once again, I'm going to need two variables. So I'm going to call right, so let's start with left, left obstacle, right obstacle, and it's going to get its values from the method obstacle. Now let's just print these out. It might not be that interesting, but let's see. run this program. Of course I have to save it. And there we go. So left, it is detecting something. My bench is still in the box so it is detecting an obstacle and it has no light. I'm going to take the, the box off and now it's false. Now true and false, you know, Boolean variables aren't that interesting to look at. So we can modify this program a little bit and use an if statement. So if it detects an obstacle, I can print something, otherwise I can print something else. So now that I've got all my sensors right here, and I've got my display, let's just change this up a little bit. Instead of printing this, I'm going to put in an if statement. Now they are already Boolean, so I don't have to say if left obstacle equals equals true because left obstacle is true or false. So I can just use it instead of a condition. So if not left obstacle or not right obstacle, I'm going to print no obstacle detected. else print obstacle detected. Now I chose to do you know the false first. You kind of see as we go and use this same kind of um, 
use this sensor in future programs that sometimes you want to do when it's not true. And sometimes you want to do it when it's true. So, you know, you have options. So right now, there is no obstacle. And let's see. To save. And it says no obstacle detected. I'm going to put the box back on. And it detected the obstacle. So this is working great. I could do the same thing for the light sensor. So instead of showing that there is light or isn't light, I could use some kind of an if statement. So I can just kind of determine for myself. I know my values are from, from 0 to 1. What would I determine as dark? Maybe it's less than half. Maybe it's less than a quarter. So kind of decide what do you think would be dark or what do you think would be light. So I'm going to change this and use the sensor. So if left light is less than, let's say, 0.15. And, or you could say an or, kind of try it out and see which ones are going to work best for you. Right light less than 0 0.5, 1, 0 0.15. Print in the dark else print in the light. And you can be more creative. This is a start. I still have the box on my finch. Let's see what it says. And it's in the dark. I'm going to take the box off. In the light. And I could do the same thing with temperature. I could decide if it's hot or cold, or I might even have a, a multiple branches and say if it's cold, if it's medium, you know, moderate temperature, if it's hot. So I don't have to have just two levels. I could take my temperature and I could do many things with it. Same thing with the others. I could say if only the left side detected something or only if the left side is in the light or the dark. So you can really take the, the imp information from the sensors and do a lot of things with it. Now if it's only getting one reading, still not quite that interesting. So let's put it in a loop so I can get some constant information from my robot. I'm going to need to take both of these section and put it in a loop. It's going to take me a little bit of time to do some indenting. You can, If you're following along with me, then go ahead and take some time to do your indenting. We'll catch back up together in just a minute. Let's start with a for loop. Now let's start with a while loop. I'm going to use a counter. So while count is less than, let's say we're going to go 10 times. And the first thing I want to do is increment my count. And I'm going to actually display it because I think it will just kind of show us what's happening. So I'm going to print which pass this is. So pass 1, pass 2, pass 3, how many times it's going to go through and use the information from the sensor. So I'm going to display that. Indent everything. And then finally, I'm going to do a blank print statement so that each pass is separated and it's easy for me to tell what's happening. Save. Now it's basically going to give me the same thing because I haven't changed anything. If I was really quick, I could throw the box on, throw the box off, put on some ice, take off some ice, and, you know, kind of move things up around a little bit. But I just wanted to do it, and um, I'm not fast enough. I'd have to have a partner to get some different readings, but you can see how this could work with a regular while loop. Now, to improve this even one more time, I can change it. Instead of just counting it and doing it 10 times, or 100, or 500, or you know however many you want, I could actually use one of these sensors to help determine when I would quit. So while it's in the dark, I keep going, or while it's in the light. So I could stop this as soon as it gets dark. I could stop it as soon as it detects an object. I could stop it when the temperature rises or when the temperature falls. 
So you think of some kind of condition that you would like. I'm going to change it to an obstacle. So while not left obstacle and not right obstacle, I'm going to keep going. So it's going to do all these readings until it hits an obstacle. Now, there's one problem. I'm going to run this pro program. But can you determine what the problem is before I even run it? Okay, so here's my error. It says I've got I'm referring to left obstacle before it has an assignment. I'm de I'm using a variable, but it does not have a value yet. So it needs a priming read. We talked about this back when we did loops. Both right and left obstacle need a value before I can try to use the many condition. So I'm going to simply take this line of code where they get a value. This is going to become my priming read. I just have to have it outside the loop. Now they both have values and I can start going. So this is going to keep going until it detects an edge. So I'm going to put the box on it and it stopped. I can do the same thing with light. I could do it with the temperature. And then if you want to try the acceleration, you could you know work on something with that too. So I've given you the basis of a great program here that's using values from the sensors. I want you to modify it, add something different, make it your own, uh, make it more complex, try some different conditions, and then just try something really interesting. And when you're ready, you can turn it in.